<laughs> hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George here. Today, we're taking a look at the 2025 Subaru Forester Touring in the sapphire blue. So Touring in the Canadian trim is our mid-level trim, a step up from the convenience. This is what I would personally consider, quote unquote, middle of the road. 25 is a full redesign for the Forester, updated exterior, interior, technology, everything. So no bo new body style for 2025. Definitely still looks like a Forester, but it is a departure from the Forester that we all know and love, the previous gens, in some aspects. So definitely a new noticeable front end. We've got a new grill. It is gray, metallic, definitely hexagonal in shape, leads into these headlights, and they're slightly smaller more angular than the previous gen, but ridiculously bright, LED steering responsive. We've got new fog lights, and at night they look absolutely phenomenal. Seeing them during the day, unfortunately, doesn't do them justice, but it's a very imposing front end on the new Forester. We've got a lot of hexagonal design language patterns in the Forester. You can see that right there, and you'll see that throughout the Forester. Now, something I personally notice, and I've had a lot of my shorter clientele notice versus the previous gen Forester, the shoulders on the hood are definitely smaller than the previous one, so that helps increase visibility, especially if you're of smaller stature. You can kind of see your corners, find your corners more easily. We've got new wheels. These are 17 inch, those are as small as you can fit on the new Foresters. Bigger brake calipers stop you from having smaller wheels than that. We've got the cladding around the wheel arches including functional vents. You saw that in the Crosstrek and WRX, and that extends into the Forester now. And then the cladding goes along the bottom, more hexagonal design language, more of that texture, and up all the way around there. Now we've got gray painted mirror caps, no integrated turn signals there, but it does say Subaru there. Gray painted mirror caps. We've got the roof rails with the integrated tie downs front and rear. So when you get crossbars for the roof rails, these are designed to be tie downs if you're securing something to those crossbars. The rope can't slip or the strap can't slip. And I'll give you a look at that side profile. It's that square boxy profile that all Forester lovers know and love. They kept that design language. We've got 8.7 inches of minimum ground clearance, which is more than your average half ton pickup. And of course, Subaru's full-time legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive, and they have changed the location of the symmetrical all-wheel drive badge. We've got our fuel door, rear passenger side. If the driver door is locked, it's locked. If this is, if the driver door is unlocked, this is unlocked. Regular fuel, unleaded regular. New tail lights with half a hexagon, and that continues around. We've got this black painted strip right above where it says Forester and it's debossed there, all the way across to the other half of the hexagon. But I do actually quite like those new taillights. They look great when it's dark out. Rear three quarter shot is a great angle on the Forester. Now, all of the badging, which isn't that much, has been blacked out. And of course, we have our backup sensors integrated into the rear bumper and they'll actually apply the brakes if you're gonna hit something in reverse between speeds of one and 15 kilometers an hour. And then these third windows have been increased in size to increase your visibility when you're shoulder checking from the driver's side. Now, something that I initially wasn't an absolutely massive fan of when the 25s first came out was the kick gate, but that has grown on me. So walk up. You make a kicking motion and you back up. It's important it senses the key, which is in my pocket here, move away from the vehicle. If it doesn't sense that, it's not gonna open. And we have a ton of room, just like you'd expect with that big boxy square rear end in the Forester. Tons of room. We've got this new cargo tray with the topographic map. We've got a privacy cover slash tonneau cover, hides everything from the top of the seats down. And this is removable and you can actually tuck it underneath this false floor. You can kind of see where it's supposed to slide across there. We've got those other floor pieces that are easy to remove. We've got a little bit of storage under here. And then we have our tire and our tools underneath that, which I hope none of you ever need to use. We also have grocery bag hooks on either side and the rear driver's side has a 12 volt power point. We've got physical hard mount cargo hooks, front and rear corners. And then in the Forester, we have some little Easter eggs hidden throughout the textured areas 
You'll see some of them on the windows, and the one that was always hardest for me to find. Little mountains there. It does say Subaru in there, and we have a LED cargo light, which is nice. That'll shut off when we close the hatch. Now to close it, I can do it from the key fob, I can press these buttons, I can close and lock it, I can pull down, but I can also do it hands-free, and the idea is I've grabbed something, a tote, my hands are full. I do this, kick, and back up. It beeps three times, and then it closes on the third one. So, easy to use, very functional, and they built that, the Forester with functionality in mind. Now, you'll notice that these doors open significantly wider than a lot of the competitions, and that is to make it easier to get stuff in and out, car seats, children, and make it easier to access for people with mobility issues. Super's done a great job of that. And you've got a ton of headroom, ton of legroom, you can easily fit three full-size pastures comfortably across in the back of the Forester. And in the mid-level touring, we have the dark gray slash black cloth upholstery with that blue contrast stitching. And that's not just because the exterior is the sapphire blue in this Forester, that's just the color they chose. We also have really easy access to the latch system, the lower anchors and tethers for children, makes it easy to remove or install a car seat. And I initially was concerned about these not being covered, thought it might dig into your lower back, your butt when you're sitting in it. I can happily tell you that is not the case. Of course, don't take my word for it. Try one out yourself. There's a fold down armrest with integrated cup holders and these seats can be reclined. Simply pull and then I'm going to use my elbow here. It's obviously easier with two hands. You can recline it. So not a whole bunch. It's not like you're sitting in a lazy boy recliner, but enough to you may be able to take a nap and you pull it again and it goes up. Out of the center console, we have vents. In addition to the vents underneath each front seat facing rearward to increase airflow to the second row, it heats up and cools down very effectively. We've got USBs for charging. We have three map back pockets on the backs of both front seats. Then this is textured and designed to be used as a step if you're putting something on the roof. Now, the reason they want you standing on that instead of on the tire is the tire sits inside the fender. And if I'm standing on the middle of the tire, I'm right at the back of the rail system here. I'll probably end up leaning over, potentially slipping off and hurting myself. So Subaru's all about safety, and they took that into account. The rear door card, we've got soft touch materials, really easy to grab, good feeling handles, even the, where your thumb goes when you grab the handle of soft touch. Bottle holder with a little bit of storage. Another Easter egg there. Got the lock, easy to use. And we also have this extra side impact crash safety bar, that silver bar there, and that locks right in there, ties into the subframe, and that's designed to stop things from intruding into the passenger cab in the event of a side collision, which again, we never hope is the case. Nice, solid sounding doors when you close them. I don't know if the mic picked it up, but let's see here if I could pick it up again. Solid, not tinny like some of the other vehicles that you may find out there. Panoramic sunroof, slide only, not tilt but this is the first trim level where you get that. Front door card looks very, very similar to that of the rear. Soft touch material, soft touch armrest. The front two windows are auto, power windows, regular power windows for the rear. Window lock. Great if you have children, grandchildren, friends that are playing with their windows and you don't want that. We've got our power mirror adjustment and a little bit more storage along with the bottle holder down there. Driver's seat is power, including lumbar, and it's the same seating material up front as it is in the second row. Very, very comfortable cloth. And these seats are specially designed to put you in a more relaxed position so you're less fatigued at the end of a day of driving. Less fatigue, more alert, less accidents, essentially. This is also the first trim level where you get the power driver's seat. Now, by the driver's left knee, we have a couple buttons. We can open the rear hatch from here. We can control the scroll wheel for the brightness of our gauges. And we can turn off the proximity tailgate, that kick gate, should you figure out a reason as to why you would not want that. Now, on the inside, I'm gonna move it back, but there's a lot of room in these Foresters. With the seat all the way back, and I've got fairly long legs, I would not be comfortable driving like that. So I know lots of people, taller people, potentially feel like they can't drive something like a Forester, they have to get into a full-size SUV. I recommend trying it. So on the steering wheel, it is leather wrapped. This is the first trim level where you get a heated steering wheel. There's a faint orange light there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but the wheel's gonna start getting warm. It gets absolutely cooking, absolutely fantastic for our winters here. The left-hand side of the steering wheel, we have our Bluetooth and audio controls. You can issue voice commands, access Google Assistant or Siri for hands-free texting and navigation. We've got our volume control left to right. It used to be this. This now changes our little information screen up top here. It gives us different info depending on what we want to look at. 
we have our source button to switch from AM to FM to USB to auxiliary, et cetera. And we can switch between presets there. So media, phone calls, don't have to take your hands off the wheel, which is really nice. The right hand side, we have our adaptive cruise and our lane centering. Now, both of those driving assists are part of these three black boxes, those color stereo eyesight cameras, and they are looking for cyclists, road lines, pedestrians, and other vehicles. These are also responsible for automatic emergency braking to stop you from hitting other vehicles, pedestrians, cyclists, and it actually saves you 10% on your basic insurance here in BC. So when I've turned on the cruise, I get an image of the Forester, and you'll see there's four bars ahead of it all the way down to one. That is the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you that you'll follow at if you catch up while using cruise. So four bars at 100 kilometers an hour, you'll follow at approximately 150 to 180 feet behind the vehicle ahead of you. Good safe distance. You can decrease it just by pressing that. So if you get to a busier, more urban area, metropolitan area, and you need to follow closer, you can. Lane centering, when I turn that on, I get the little image of the steering wheel there. We've got these gray lines above 60 kilometers an hour if the eyesight cameras can see the road lines it'll illuminate whichever side it can see in white same white as the distance markers and when it does that it'll actually give you gentle steering input to keep help help keep you centered in the middle of your lane great assist we're not hands-free but it will help take you through corners you're not going to wander as much in your lane i recommend you let someone show you how it works it's amazing i didn't think i would like this driving tech but it works really well. Now, something important to note, lane centering, you cannot turn on on its own. So if I'm pressing it, you'll notice it's not changing. I have to turn on cruise. I don't have to have a speed set, but I have to have cruise turned on and now it's active and I can turn it off or on. So that uh, that is kind of like, it's a safety switch because this can be a little polarizing, can catch you off guard. It's not gonna rip the wheel out of your hand by any means, but it's a little disconcerting when it feels like the car's fighting you, when you don't expect it. We have sport and intelligent drive modes. Intelligence, what it defaults to for everyday driving. Sport means go fast sooner. It's not gonna change it into a race car, but it does give you a little extra oomph when you're passing on the highway. We have Subaru's easy to use 11.6 touchscreen infotainment system here. Top portion, we've got weather, which is part of your satellite radio trial. We gain access to X mode, which is like four low in a pickup for that really rough stuff, going 40 kilometers an hour or less. And you just, boom, turn it on. We've got X mode. It locks the all-wheel drive 50-50 and makes the brake actuated limited slips work more aggressively. We've got widgets, gauges, which we can change around. And we have what we're listening to. Four-way flashers, hopefully you never need them. Hazards. Main portion of the screen, there's a little bit of glare here, so I'm actually gonna go move this Forester to hopefully cut down on that. I'll be right back. So I'm back and there's a little bit less glare on the screen. So main portion of the screen on either side, we have volume knobs, physical volume knob, physical tuning knob. We've got radio, which as you can, well, that's a little bit louder. Um, as you can imagine, Sirius XM, AM, FM, fairly standard. This little home button always takes us home. We've got media, which is anything that isn't built into the vehicle. So Bluetooth, auxiliary, USB phone, allows you to hook up your phone for Bluetooth. And you can have up to five devices in total hooked up. No, we're not gonna hook up. Uh, apps, we have wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay. You gain access to the My Subaru app after the vehicle's registered in your name. My Subaru app doubles up there. Under settings, there's a ton of settings you can change. You've got general, sound, so bass, treble, all that where the speakers are putting the focus of the sound, car, lots of settings you can play with to really make the vehicle yours. Car info, you can set maintenance reminders, you can get driving statistics. You can turn off the display, tells you how to turn it back on. It just takes a second to turn off, it lets you read it, which is nice. But off, super easy. Press and hold, and you're back on. There is a second to screen valet mode so you can lock people out of certain things if you're on the vehicle auto vehicle hold which is a brake holder for construction drive through rush hour traffic then we have vehicle dynamics control which is traction control you can also add additional shortcuts if there's an area in the settings you go to often you don't want to go through x amount of screens put it in reverse backup camera pops up very very clear backup camera reverse automatic braking parking sensors are active shows you the top of the bumper there so you have something to relate to and twist and hold that towards yourself you can clean the backup camera very handy. 
down below. Main portion next to the home screen, we've got the home button. We can hook up phones quickly through Bluetooth. You can set driver profiles. You can disable the auto start stop. Some people don't like it. I understand why they wouldn't. Auto vehicle hold, you can turn on from a button. So that's a brake holder for construction, drive through rush hour traffic. And then if you go into the car there, you get vehicle controls. You can change the driving assistance. Under more settings, you've got warning volumes. You can change the units to miles per hour, miles per gallon, if you travel in the States. Below that, we've got our climate controls. And we have physical buttons on either side for the driver and passenger, which is nice. You can have two separate temperatures, or you can click, you can drag, easy to use. You can sync it back to driver controlled control where you want your airflow, if you want AC on, if you want recirc on, max AC. We have big fan strength buttons, really hard to miss. We have the ability to focus, right now it's just on the front, but you can focus it on the entire cabin. So it'll really force airflow to the rear. So if you have passengers or pets or things that need to be kept cold or warm, you can focus that to the rear as well. So they get more airflow. Three stages of heated seats for the driver and the passenger easy enough to turn off easy enough to activate you can turn off climate altogether below the screen we have two usbs and an auxiliary along with a wireless charger and i really like what they've done with this new center console in the 25 foresters this is soft touch so if you have to rest your knee against it or that's your driving position it's not going to hurt as much as if it's a hard plastic center console again they've changed that's our manual mode where you use the paddles. I like this gear selector. I feel it's very ergonomically shaped. It feels good in the hand. Of course, that's a comfort thing and comfort varies depending upon you. We have our park brake, it's electronic, pull up to activate. You still get the red P for park there. If I push down without having my foot on the brake on the park brought, it says to press the brake and it doesn't go off. Foot on the brake, off it goes. Cup holders. 12 volt power point for any charging needs, portable GPSs, something like that. A little bit of storage there. This is rubberized in here as well. And then this semi soft touch armrest. So I call it semi soft touch because it's not a hard plastic, but it's not like it's leather wrapped. And there's quite a bit of storage in there. No power points in there, but there's a place to run cords out of if you have put, you know, a power bank or something like that in there. I really like the dash in front of the passenger side. I like the texture. Again, that hexagonal design language you see. Soft touch, glove box, regular size. And then up top, auto dimming rear view mirror, which is my favorite feature in any vehicle ever. There's no switch to flick. If someone's got their brights on behind you, just automatically dims. It's fantastic. Does also come with the home link system. So three separate garage doors can be hooked up to your mirror, which is very, very easy to do, by the way. There's three ways to do it. Very each is very easy and you've got an integrated compass there so facing west right now but this is my favorite feature ever i think it's fantastic you don't really notice the third mono wide angle mono camera for the eyesight because of the positioning of that mirror which is great above that we've got our led map lights we've got our sunroof control we've got sos and roadside assistance slash concierge that's part of the three-year trial to the my subaru connected services you get with most new subarus We've got our sunglass storage. We've got card holders on both sun visors. We've got vanity mirror with a light. And I actually find these quite large, which is nice. You can extend it if the sun's directly at your left or at your passenger's right. And you will notice there's handles, four handles, and the headliner's black, which I'm a huge fan of. I know some people like the lighter on the top. Uh, maybe it feels a little bit more open, but I don't feel that this the dark takes away or makes it feel any more claustrophobic. There's a ton of room in the Forester. I mentioned Easter eggs earlier. There's another one, Flying Bird. There's several of those in that forest or in this Forester, all Foresters really. I'll give you guys that quick 360 walk around of the 2024 Subaru Forester Touring in the Sapphire Blue. Touring is our mid-level trim. It's powered by a 2.5 liter four-cylinder boxer engine producing 180 horsepower. You get a good balance of power and efficiency out of it. 8.7 inches of minimum ground clearance, which is more than your average half-ton pickup. And of course, Subaru's full-time legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive. Really, it's point and shoot. It'll get you through the worst weather conditions the North can throw at you. 
Thank you for sticking with me, watching my walkthrough of the Forester Touring. I'm Tyson, the Super Specialist from Super Prince George. If you guys have any questions about this car behind me, any of the features in it, any of the functions, or you'd like to see something in a future video, please put it in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.